Last time we talked about how Canada started developing its classification system and indicated that by the time we got into the 60s, uh, we had the beginning of Canada's taxonomic classification system. We moved beyond the geographic classification system. And uh, we're starting to talk in terms of the morphological characteristics of the soil profile and the idea of a modal concept or central concept uh, in terms of soil classification. Um, so people often talk about the 60s in particular and the 70s as being more the, the, the glory years or the second era in soil survey. So what was going on at that time that makes people say these things? Well, uh, of course, there were uh, meetings of the, uh, I think it was by then it was called the Canada Soil Survey Committee in uh, Winnipeg in uh, 1963. There was an important meeting uh, at which they developed the, an interpretive classification, the classification of the soil capability for agriculture, which was used by the Canada Land Inventory for, for rating soils uh, based on soil survey information, but for rating soils right across the country. The 1965 meeting in Laval uh, saw the introduction of the organic order, something that Dr. Ehrlich, who was by then the chair of the Canada Soil Survey Committee, had been working on with the American pedologists and, and, and resulted in that order being included in, in our classification. But certainly, yes, the 1968 meeting in, uh, in Edmonton at the University of Alberta was, was, a bit, was a watershed or was a milestone meeting. There was, a, you know, there were, th I think, several important things that happened. One is there was a move to a much more diagnostic or specific classification. Uh, up to that time, the, each sort of soil group had been based on the idea what a, what a modal or a typical individual is like. Well, now they, they introduced the concept of diagnostic horizons for particular kinds of soil, such as the Chernozemic A, which was diagnostic of the, uh, of the Chernozemic order, and the Chernozemic A was well-defined, uh, with, with, you know, quantitatively or specifically, uh, or the Podzolic B, the same sort of thing happened. So that was one of the first uh, uh, changes uh, in, in, to much more specific classification. At the same time, the similar things were happening in the U.S. with soil taxonomy. Uh, and I guess the, the, one of the important second uh, changes was the fact that uh, there were s some important changes to the classification. For example, the luvisolic soils, the luvisolic order, which was well accepted in Europe, it was introduced into our classification to describe the soils that we had called uh, grey wooded soils before. And, uh, and the, at the same time, the, the definition of the podzolic order was changed, and it was restricted to basically those soils where the translocation of iron and aluminum, along with organic matter, was the dominant uh, soil forming process. So the, the podzolic order was essentially narrowed uh, in the definition, and there was a much more quantitative um, definition of the podzolic B, which was diagnostic, based not, both on morphology and on certain chemical analyses that had to be done on the soils. And I guess the third change, which was sort of a consequence of the first two, and that was that the brunisolic order was, was changed quite a lot, and that really resulted from the fact that uh, many of the sort of sandy podzolic lake soils of, of Western Canada uh, didn't have enough iron and aluminum in their B horizons to qualify as podzol podzolic order, and so they sort of became brunisolic by default. And of course, that made for major changes to the way the soils were mapped and the way the, you know, the general soil map of Canada shows. Now we have brunisols right across the, the boreal forest in, in, in Western Canada. So I would think that with all these changes, there'd be a lot of updates issued and things like that. And so up to this point, most of that information is really just being distributed to, to the soil surveyors, I would think, the people who are active in the field. At what point did there, was there a move towards more uh, distribution of this information and sort of publication of it? Well, the, uh, the first sort of publication, up until uh, the early days, the, they were just sort of mimeograph pages stapled together with a, a colored cardboard cover, right? And that was, that was the reports. And that's what we used in the field to, to classify soils. But in 1974, the system of soil classification for Canada was, was, was basically printed and published and, and, and distributed, distributed. And I think this is really an excellent, uh, excellent uh, publication. It, of course, has the classification in there along with some very good color plates showing t typical soil profiles. Uh, there's a section in here on international correlation of the Canadian classification with other classifications, especially the world or FAO system and the American system. There's a, a section on soil capability for agriculture, and also there's, um, uh, there, there's, there's other important material about how, like basically how to describe a soil profile. So this particular publication was, it was really a, you know, a, a pretty significant sort of uh, undertaking of, of, the, of that time. Uh, and it came out in 1974. And of course, it was in a binder format because they, basically the idea was that uh, if the revisions to the classification were necessary uh, for a particular order, you'd just take the old stuff and clip in the new stuff and, and you'd go from there again.
So uh, the second, uh, uh, it's actually called the first edition. The first edition of our classification was published in 1978. It's, as you can see, it's a hardcover book. It came out, it has basically the material that was in the 1974 edition with one edition from the point of view of classification. That's that the chrysolic order is, is in here now. And of course, this is, I think, one of the first times that chrysolic or permafrost effect affected soils were included in the classification system. Uh, in this book as well, there's a key for classifying a, a pedon or a profile. Uh, it's only at the order level, but it's a, it's a first sort of Canadian attempt at a key. Uh, before that, basically, you had to learn the, the classification sort of over time, uh, you know, to gradually pick up all the details. Well, this, the key made it possible for the less experienced to use the classification. And, and, and other, uh, other aspects of the classification, too, that are uh, quite, quite interesting. Uh, there's a landform classification that was uh, that Don Acton from, uh, from, from the Agriculture Canada at the university here was instrumental in. So this, this was basically the, 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 the first, uh, you know, the first edition. And it coincided, actually, with the World Soils Congress in Edmonton, which was the uh, uh, time when all, you know, soil scientists from around the world came to Canada. To, to a big conference, and of course, I think the Canadian pedology community, the soil scientists in Canada, wanted to have their classification system available, you know, and have it on show, you might say. Okay. So there was a lot of activity in the 60s and 70s, and did all of this momentum continue forward as we moved into the 80s and 90s? Well, not, not in all areas. In, I think in British Columbia and Alberta, there was less, less activity on soil survey. Uh, and actually, the name of the Canada Soil Survey Committee it changed again. It became the Expert on Committee on Soil Survey. It was an Agriculture Canada committee, so that was a bit of a change. Uh, but certainly in, Elber in, you know, in, in, in Saskatchewan and so forth, there's quite a lot of soil survey uh, activity. One of, one of the, of course, the products of the, of the, of the 1980s was the, the second edition of the Canada soil, Canada's Canadian System of Soil Classification. It came out. It's, it's not a lot different uh, than, than the first edition, but it does have some differences in the glycolic order and the organic order. Once again, a key is included and, and so forth. So it, it, it was, uh, you know, a, 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 an update at the classification. But I think about this time we see a sort of an expanding role of ag of Agriculture Canada people in the classification, and perhaps a diminished role from some of the universities and some of the provincial uh, soil, survey, so, soil survey organizations. Okay. And so where is the classification system at, at now? Well, uh, where we are now, I guess, uh, through, through, the, uh, through the 1990s is, uh, well, for one thing that happened, uh, in 1998, the third edition of the, of, the, of the classification came out, the third orange book. Uh, this, uh, of course, is, once again, it's, a, it's an evolving sort of uh, system. Uh, now we have the 10th order in the, in the classification. That's the vertisolic order. The vertisolic order came about because of, um, you know, a lot of research. I mean, much of it happened in Saskatchewan with Dr. Mermoot and Dr. Acton and so forth. So the vertisolic order for this, you might say, the, the cracking clay soils of Western Canada, those soils that have a high content of expanding clay minerals, that was included for the first time. And also that, that actually in the late 80s, there was a, quite a, a big field trip that focused on these soils and brought scientists from around the world. So this, this was certainly one of the, uh, you know, in 1998 was one of the major accomplishments. But I think it also should be mentioned that about this time, uh, the soil landscapes of Canada maps were developed. Now these are what we might call general or small scale maps. They're actually at a scale of one to, one, to one million, so you can show a great deal on the map. But they are uh, maps that are consistent right across the country with, with, a, with a, you know, a standard legend and so forth, so they can be used uh, wherever. Uh, they're, of course, they're well supported by computer databases and GIS and so forth. And actually, they've had, a, they were intended mainly for sort of educational and policy use, you might say. But they've actually had quite a lot of use as Canada does accounting for some of our climate change uh, treaties, such as the Kyoto Accord. Uh, sort of adding up the amount of soil carbon that we have in the country, the, the sort of geographical basis to that, that process is the Soil Landscapes of Canada map, and similarly for some of the work involving greenhouse gases and so forth. It's the similar sort of base map is being used. Okay, so this second era really saw the, the, the full development of our soil classification system into uh, the inclusion of all 10 orders that we have now. Uh, we saw a, a lot of the country get mapped at a greater uh, level of detail. And not only can we now view the classification system online, but we can actually access a lot of the, the data, the soil survey data online, which is, uh, it sounds like having a lot of implications in terms of uh, policy and land use planning and uh, both at the federal level and 
I think there's also increasing use of this uh, in, in the consulting industry as well. So uh, it's very interesting in terms of the, the changes over a relatively short period of time. Thanks. <laughs>